Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean from FlipMath.com and I'm going to go over the 2022 AP Calculus free response question and this is AB uh, question number four as well as BC question number four. It was on both of the exams for 2022. Now this problem gives us a table of values and notice right away that this is our prime. This is already a rate of change here. It's in centimeters per day. And that's an important thing to recognize for when we are being asked several questions about it. So we have an ice sculpture that's uh, that's getting smaller and smaller for 12 days. And it is a twice differentiable function. That's important because if it's twice differentiable, that means it is continuous. And so I'm just going to write that down because that might come back for some of our other problems that we're going to work with. So the first thing is to approximate the second derivative of r at 8.5. And we're going to use the average rate of change over the interval 7 to 10. Now, that makes sense. 8.5 is going to be right in the middle here between 7 and 10. So we're just going to use the average rate between 7 and 10. And let's show our computations. So my second derivative evaluated, evaluated at 8.5 is going to be approximately. And then you just use this rate of change here. So remember, it's the change in y. So the y's have to go on top, and they almost always do this to us, where they swap them. The, you know, the, the 7 and 10, those are the change in x's, and those go on bottom of the fraction. So negative 3.8 minus a uh, negative 4.8, and then that is all over the 10 minus 7. Now this is the answer. You can stop there so that you don't make a mistake. And then we just need to use the in indicate units of measure. And so uh, what is that? Well, it's centimeters per day, but it's the rate of change of that per day. So you could say centimeters per day squared, or if you wanted to write it out as centimeters per day per day, depending on how you want it. Now, if you wanted to just see, yes, you could keep going and end up with this as your answer, negative 0 0.6 over 3, which equals negative, I forgot the negative there, negative 1 fifth centimeters per day squared. But again, I would just really recommend you stop right there and use that as your answer. And don't stress about the computation part of simplifying it on the AP exam. It'll save yourself time and save yourself some mistakes of computation. And this lesson was from 2.1. 2.1 was lesson right there, defining average and instantaneous rate of change at a point. All right, next up, we're asked, is there a time between 0 and 3 for which r prime of t equals negative 6? Now, as soon as I looked at this, my first thought was, oh, mean value theorem, because it's the rate of change. When does the when does a rate, the r prime equal negative 6? Except this already is r prime. So this is not the mean value theorem. This is actually the intermediate value theorem. That's what we're going to work with here. Intermediate value theorem, because we're looking at when does this thing actually equal negative 6? So you remember that twice differentiable stuff? That tells us that we know that r prime is continuous. It's con differentiable, therefore it's also continuous, is continuous. So we're allowed to use the intermediate value theorem. Now I've got that, uh, what do I know here? r prime of 0 equals negative 6.1, and r prime of 3 equals negative 5. So if we're at negative 6.1 and we go up to negative 5, that means at some point in there, we must be equaling negative 6. So we can say, by the intermediate value theorem, r prime of t has to equal negative 6 for some t on the interval 0 to 3, because we've shown right here that negative 6 has to be in between r prime of 0 and r prime of 3. And that one is less than 1.16. 1 1.16 was, what is that one? Right there, intermediate value theorem. All right, let's go on to part C. Part C, we're going to use a right Riemann sum with four subintervals to, uh, to approximate the value of the integral of this. So we're finding the area under the curve of r prime. And so to come up with our four intervals, well, that's one, two, three, four. And so what we need to do is show that this is approximately, now you have to show the width times the height. So the width of this first interval is three days. So I'm going to say three, and I'm multiplying it since it's a right Riemann sum. I do the right side of the interval, which has a, has a height of negative five. So I'm looking at each of the rectangles and adding them up. So the height of the next one would be four, and I multiply by the height on the right side, which is negative 4.4. And you continue on and you get these here. All right, so now this is where I would stop. You're good. You don't have to actually show all of the computations for this. You don't have to simplify that. But we do need to make sure we're putting units of measure in. Does it say 
It doesn't say, but I would always use units of measure if you can. So the integral of this, it was centimeters per day. If you take the integral of that, it is now just centimeters. Okay, so now just so you know, if you did try and multiply this all out and figure it out, and you hopefully don't make a mistake, which would be really easy to do with these crazy decimals, but actually cleans up kind of nicely and you get negative 51 centimeters. So that is the answer there. But they're gonna be looking for, did you set up the computations with the width and the height for each of the intervals? So be careful about listing all of those. And this lesson is 6.2. So if I look at flipmath.com, 6.2 is right there, approximating areas with Riemann sums. Our last problem, part D, we've got this cone that's decreasing and they're going to give us a bunch of information here. Decreasing at this rate, in fact, here, let's do this. I, I've got this set up where I've got more room to write. So uh, they're gonna ask us to find the rate of change of the volume. So I'm going to write down the things I need to know. I need dv dt and that is my question mark. This is what I'm trying to solve for, dv dt. So I'm going to end up taking the derivative of this thing to get dv dt derivative with respect to time. So what are the things I know? I know that the height of the cone is decreasing at this rate. So I can say dh dt is equal to negative two centimeters per day. They also give me at time t equals three. The radius is 100 and the height is 50. Okay, and that's all of the information I have. So let's start, uh, let's start trying to figure out how to do this. We're going to take this thing and find the derivative of that by taking this thing, use the product rule. So I'm just going to take the constants and leave them in front, kind of like I'm factoring it out of the whole thing. And then I can use just this here. I'm now just looking at that part to fill in this bracket. So product rule, 2r dr dt, and then h is left alone, plus, and now I leave my r squared alone, and the derivative of h with respect to time is dh dt. All right, let's plug in the things we know. Well, this is what we this is what we're trying to solve for, so that's good. That's what we're trying to get. So this is going to equal one third pi. All right, I have my two. What's my r? R was one hundred. What's my dr dt? Uh oh, there is no dr dt. So what am I supposed to put there? Well, I know that at time t equals three, dr dt. Look at this. It's right here. At time three, we have in the table what dr dt was. R prime of t is dr dt, so it's negative five. So I can go back here and say that that's a negative five. And then the h was 50. And then I just keep plugging things in. R squared, so I have 100 squared. dh dt was a negative two. And then I'm done. That is my answer. And if I wanted to use uh, units, I think it already gave me the units, right? Yeah, cubic centimeters per day, but I still like to write out my units, centimeters cubed per day. It's just good habit to write out the units. So there's the answer, and I would stop right there. You could simplify this, but you're bound to make an error. A lot of students would make errors, maybe you wouldn't necessarily, but just so you know what the answer is, it would be negative 70,000 over three pi. That is a crazy answer, and uh, that's why yeah, you might get that, but that's a lot of time that you're spending on doing the calculations that you wouldn't need to worry about, okay? So for now, anyways, maybe they will change it in the future, I don't know, but for now, it, the College Board doesn't expect you to, to simplify that. You could just leave it right there once you've set it up. All right, that's everything. Hopefully that was helpful to you. This is Mr. Bean signing off.